All right, it's time for us to do our Kegel exercises. Why do we do them? Who cares? Well, the reason is, is that our pelvic floors are very important for our health. Our pelvic floors hold up the organs of the pelvis, including in women, the uterus, the vagina, the bladder, and the rectum. And so you, the, the stronger you can make your pelvic floor muscles, the better you can support them. I like it. So then we have this patented gynocast customized Kegel exercise. World renowned. Custom. And acclaimed. <laughs> prized winning. We sound super fancy when we talk about it like that. <laughs> That's right. But we've, you've come up with this great, great routine that we can use to help strengthen our pelvic floor. So easy. Right. So you ready to start it off? You're ready. Okay. Three. Times a day. Six. Days a week. Nine. Seconds per Kegel exercise. And 12. Kegel exercise in a row for a rep. And so you're just doing it three times a day. Do 12. Hold it for nine seconds. Okay, you can do it six days a week and take a day off. I, I, Roll on the pelvic floor like a chain link fence, Twyla Dang. I like You'll it. be able to pull a trailer. You will be the envy of your neighborhood. You will walk taller. Um, I'm going to go do them right now. I'd like to walk taller today. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure that you're doing them. And feel free to go get that infographic off of the GynoCast uh, Facebook page and share it with your friends as well. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Gynocast. My name is Dr. Eric Keegard, board certified, not certifiable, <laughs> uh, uh, obstetrician, gynecologist. I'm here with my wing person, wing woman. Yeah, you can call me wing woman. It's wing, right. wing gal. I Twilight, don't want to be a gal. Twilight day. Hi. Hi, how you doing? I'm good. How are you it's today? It's nice to see you again. Good. So what are we talking about? We're going to do something different. Yeah, so... We're gonna um, just yeah, so uh, traditionally uh, we have uh, this relationship that we've cultivated over four or five years of working mm -hmm. together yep. where you tend to be the expert at all things medical and I tend to be the sassy black lady with opinions. <laughs> and it works I for I want to be the sassy black lady. I can't do that. Nope, but that's okay. Right. Um, but usually the, the, the balance is very specifically set. Um, and every once in a while we would veer into territory um, before in our old radio life where I wound up by default taking the lead on things, yeah. mostly because I'm super opinionated and I'm not afraid to say things yeah. to people. And that's good. Yeah. So uh, today I actually um, am drawing a sort of back from the past and uh, jumping into, I love a good list. Yeah, and who I doesn't like a list? No, I just, I love the opportunity to sort of look at something and say, hey, somebody's cultivated this thing that says you should do these things and your life will be better or happier. Yeah. And I kind of like to tear those things up. And then you <laughs> so get, oh, you do. You, you don't like to, I, you don't I, like to draw a line through the things as you achieve them? Uh, not necessarily, but it kind of depends. So today we, was, uh, we found a list on the internet um, and it specifically talks about the concept of a bucket list, in particular, okay. a bucket list for women. Yeah. And since everything we do here is centered around women, I think it's a good list to try to uh, kind of look at and see what we think about some of these things. But before we do that, we should actually ask the question, do you actually believe in bucket lists? That's a good question. Bucket lists. Um, and do you know, by definition, do you know what that is? I know what it is. I don't know where it came from. Uh, do you, is there a reason? Why is it called a bucket list? Okay, well, I tried to do a little bit of digging, and at first I thought it came from, there was like a movie that came out in 2007. Yep. It had Jack Nicholson, yep. uh, Morgan Freeman, yep. and it was like two guys that were dying, and they decided to like do all the things they had never done. Yep. And the movie is called The Bucket List. And I thought that might be the origin of the I species. I think the term has been there. Yeah, it actually it was a little bit longer than that. So I did a little digging on the internet, and it turns out the earliest reference to it um, actually came in nineteen in, in 1993. There's a very loose um, hmm. reference to it. Hmm. Um, and it, it kind of was like an indicator of that things could be considered, but it wasn't like how we look at the term. Mm -hmm. And in 2004, it actually first appeared in print. It was in a book called Unfair and Unbalanced, The Lunatic <laughs> Mag... Wait, uh, wait, till, wait till you see this word. <laughs> Magnal Magnalquence? What? Yeah, I can't even I can't even pronounce that. that. We'll put it in the syllabus because I I can barely pronounce it. Um, of Henry E. Pankey, the book is by Patrick M. Carlyle, and the quote where he uses it says, "So anyway, a great man in his in his querulous twilight years, who doesn't want to go gently into that blacky black night, he wants to cut loose, dance on the razor's edge, pry the lid off his bucket list." 
So that's the first time it was referenced. And obviously it was referenced in terms of a man. So, and there's yeah. many things in our society. We sometimes lead men first and then have the women catch up later on. That's right. And um, as is the case, we I have noticed over the years we've said bucket list and then we have become more specialized. Now it's a bucket list for women, bucket list for, you know, certain ethnicities, bucket list for children, bucket list for families. And we've kind of, as always, as we, as we do, we, we've beaten the concept to death. We like to do that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, because I, you asked me a question right when we started out. Do I like bucket lists? Yeah, do you believe in it? Do yeah. you have one? No. Oh, really? I, I really don't. Oh, I, uh, must be nice. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, this, so now I'm starting to think, as you've been going, I'm like, why don't I have a bucket list? Because you already do all the amazing things you can do in a lifetime. Hmm. Maybe. I have been very fortunate. Yeah. There's not a lot that I haven't done I think, that I want to do. I think that's so a fair, that's it. but I think that's a fair point. I think a lot of bucket list type, you know, longings come from not getting a chance to sort of live your life out loud in the way that you most want to. Yeah. And some of that is driven by the choices that we've made or the circumstances we find ourselves in or the experiences that we had or the, the amount of money that we have access mm-hmm. to. There are a lot of things that can kind of alter whether you get to do this. Even at, even There's a lot of things that factor into whether you have the luxury of saying you would That's like true. to do a bucket list. That's true. Because th- there's a lot of people I know that are just, they don't even think of it as a real concept because they're like, listen, I got to live. I got things to do. Yeah, right. I'm you know, and I'm, I happen to be fortunate enough that I'm in a position where I've done some living, I've done some surviving, I'm doing some thriving, and mm-hmm. now I can say, have I seen this? Have I done this? And, and yeah. bucket lists tend to be sort of the... Um, sort of the space for extreme dreaming out loud. I like that. I like that. Well, I'm gonna as we're talking about this, I'm because I feel like I need to I need to do a little soul searching here because I feel like uh, perhaps I am uh, I am missing something. Okay. Well, I don't I don't think you are, but <laughs> maybe if- I need to talk to my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with me? I don't have a bucket list. I didn't even think about even having, having that a therapist list. is going to like email me and be like, "Really? You need to start this?" Uh, now, I found a particular list. Um, it's actually at a website called bucketlist.org, which no. apparently is like a whole. How do you spell bucket? B u c k e t. Okay, <laughs> but um, are you sure? Yeah, I looked it up. Okay, um, you know, I actually am an excellent speller, but I did look it up just to be All sure. Right. All right. Um, now, this particular list is geared toward women. It, it, is, uh, it, it says to develop the 75 skills every woman should master. So this is a mastery. That's a lot yeah, this of is a, skills. Yeah, this is a mastery bucket list as opposed to like an ex- uh, a completely experiential list. Oh, my goodness. Which I what kind of like because um, I'll be perfectly honest. My approach to bucket lists are not things that I want to do before I'm dead. I tend to cultivate a bucket list year to year for my birthday. Really? Yeah, and my bucket list um, is the number of years in my age, or the, that is the number of things I set for that year to try to accomplish. And I make sure they're a mixture of high and low things. So almost every year, um, like jump out of an airplane is on there, but I, have, I haven't done it yet. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, um, two years ago, my bucket list contained um, a very specific line item at number 17, start my own business, which mm-hmm. I hadn't done, and now I have. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple years before that, my bucket list had the, the, the extreme high end was make a television appearance, which was completely out of the realm of opportunity for me at the time, but in that year, it got done. Which you did, and you were fabulous at yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. And so it, it, but I, I tend to use the concept of a bucket list to really push myself to chase the things that I will regret if I don't chase them mm-hmm. later. You know, like I, I don't ever I use this list year to year to say, have I have I tried to live m- my very best life right now as I can and not like yeah. I'm 10 years or when the kids are gone or yep. when I retire? Like, I am I really living it and f- trying to find it right now and every day? And every year the list changes a little bit. And I, I will be honest, I take great pride in looking at the list at the end of the year. Do you get them done? Do you always get them done? No, there are some things that are That's just a lot. Forty. Like you turn, yeah. I, like this year, I'm 43, so there's 43 on my bucket list, and I actually keep my bucket list on my phone now. I used to, I used to have it like handwritten somewhere, nice and in lovely handwriting, where I like took a little self care to do it. But now I keep it as like a, a um, an everyday accessible reference, so I make sure I look at it. Yeah, well, I'm having light bulbs just going off. Okay, we should have on the matriarch website, Twyla. 
Twyla's bucket list. Okay, no, you can't so see my bucket list. Oh, really? It's private. <laughs> really? Because it's personal. I don't mind sharing some things on my bucket list with some of those. But I'm just thinking, you know, Martha Stewart, whenever you see her magazine, every you can yeah, see Yeah, she puts her calendar in yeah. there. Listen, her calendar sidebar, her calendar is enough to make you want to pull oh, all I'm of your hair out. It is so detailed, but it is detailed in the most, like, oh. obsessive, compulsive way, like, to like Tuesday at four o'clock, pull the bulbs for next spring <laughs> out of the west corner of the Connecticut uh, compound. You know, it's I like, geez. But and she is really. I, I got to tell you know. I I have to. Admit, I I kind of. I I have gained a lot of respect for Martha. Stewart. Oh, I dig her. I've always. And ever I've since always she. Her. Have you seen the show? By the way, we're gonna. Have, have you yeah, seen sidebar. Snoop Dogg and Martha? Yes, it's my favorite thing. Have you not seen this? Oh yeah. Okay. I, if you haven't seen this, we'll put a link up to try to uh, give you a reference for at least the ad. It is the weirdest pairing it, I've ever, okay, but it it's, works. It's weird. The show is super weird, but it does work because it's, it's kind of hilarious how she tries to be Martha in the midst of like Snoop trying to cook and be high at the same time. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's pretty he great. Looks like, I've watched it twice and he looks like he's just stoned out of his No, mind. here's what I, here's what I want. I want the episode. <laughs> I, I really and truly want like the full tilt munchies episode where he convinces her to smoke with him and that she like. Did she do it? Okay. Is, it, is that really she real? She won't confirm or deny that she's done it, which means she's totally done she it. Has. She's listen. No, he's a she's weed 70, entrepreneur. She's seventy five years old. She's and, done everything else. Yeah, she's gonna try. He's a that. weed entrepreneur. He he owns like like a, one of the most successful weed businesses in California. There's no way she hasn't at least used edibles <laughs> with him. There's no way that she hasn't made like Martha Stewart's perfect brownies with weed in them. How do so, okay? Anyway, but, but so yeah, Martha I'll put Stewart. a link in there. Yeah, so just, yeah, I like. But, the idea. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe we can find a way to put up on the Matriarch website. Yeah, you know, like a. Um, a guide for sort of creating your own bucket list. That I like way. that. I don't, I don't see, mind doing that. I like that. I'll give I you just, credit for that. And That's I want to see idea. your bucket list. I just think it's kind of interesting, I'll especially share, now that I'll you don't want to share it. Well, that maybe, is maybe I can go back and share a, an old list. I'll, I'll maybe, maybe I'll try to go dig up the list from before I had kids because that should be a pretty interesting. Yeah. So those of you who are listening, you know how she said that she's forty, whatever. Forty three. Yeah, and we're gonna see some redacted list that's got like three of them on there because you've taken all the interesting ones out. No, I'll, if I if I'm gonna publish one, I'll publish a full right, tilt one. I'll, right. I'll, it you will have it everything on you it. You heard it. You yeah. you did. So I'll make sure we get that done. Now, um, Snoop Dogg. I, <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he Snoop Lion? Didn't no, he? it's Snoop Dogg now. He went back. Oh, he went back. Yeah. Oh. So, okay, we're going to talk about this list. <laughs> okay, we're not going to go over everything on this list, or 75 will be here all day. But I want to kind of hit on some of the things that I think are very germane to women in a, in a positive way mm-hmm. and maybe really debunk some things I think are baloney. Yeah. Um, learn. I love this idea, Twyla. Yeah. This is great. So, one of the things on this list is learn to take criticism. I actually think that's huge. Because I th- and I and I don't think just for women, but I think it's very important for women to be able to learn how to hear constructive criticism, yeah. and um and learn how to distill the difference between useful information and crap information. We get a lot of the stuff thrown at us as women every day. Like we get told every day that something is wrong with us on some level. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't turn on a TV without being told, hey, we can make your hair um, a better color. We can fix those teeth for you. We can, you know, we can make your face look nicer with makeup. We can give you, you know, we can cinch up your waist a little more. Oh, cosmetic procedures. There's, we're constantly bombarded with advertising that tells us in a very not subtle way, we need to be improved. Yeah. Exactly. And I think it's really important to be able to tune out some of that stuff, not just in the overall, but in the everyday when you're dealing with individuals and dealing with people you work with and people that you care about. Because a lot of times people don't even realize that they're inadvertently being insulting to you while they're trying to be constructive right. with you. And that's the thing. It, when I say constructive criticism, some people don't even understand what that means. There's criticism and there's constructive right. criticism. So I actually don't think you should learn to take all criticism. Because yeah. if that was the case, and if I if I actually just took whatever somebody said to me about me, you know, to heart, I well, I'd be, be in a fetal position. Yeah, drooling. I'd be miserable. So yeah. I mean, and to be honest, my my life motto um, is fly directly in the face of this. My life motto is what other people think of me is none of my business. <laughs> That's good. So well, I think you know. I'm just going to say that I I love what you're saying, and I think the idea of everything you're trying to do, Twyla, the whole matriarch uh, digital media, is the idea of trying to to counter. We have all this criticism. I, I, we're, we're mostly about women here, but yeah. I mean, we're all facing this. I mean, what is advertising? But so it's there to make us feel like we need something to make our lives complete. That yeah, we absolutely. Don't have. 
and we're getting bombarded by this and women especially and i feel like what you're trying to do with the, with matriarch is to counter that with with constructive and helpful positive messaging absolutely Whoa! thank you hey see how i just brought that in there i like that I, and i appreciate it thanks for that thanks for the plug back to snoop <laughs> we're not talking about <laughs> snoop <laughs> Um, okay, so another couple of things on here. I actually think these next two things are really smart, and I think they um, go towards something that we don't do enough of. One is basic car maintenance, and the other one is know how to invest. Actually, both of these things are things that we don't um, we don't encourage in women enough. I think I think everybody should know how to change a tire, and that's it. Really? Yeah, I, I think that we should, you should know about a little bit more than that. Why? Um, because it's your vehicle, and it's this thing that it's. Yeah, that what are you, you going to do? Though I, I listen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm man. Am I mansplaining? No. Am I man erupting? No, you're not. <laughs> Did that's I just a, make that wait, up? That's a good way. I'm gonna write that down. Man, because erupting. I just totally. I got to tell you, Twyla, I don't. This doesn't happen very often. But I totally disagree with you on the car thing. Really? And I'm not a car person, but I've done. I used to have a '73 Dodge van that I did a lot of stuff on there. I like changed the. I can't remember, you know, the, obviously you did, the tires. You did, you did car fixing. I things. did some car fixing stuff, like the rotors and all this stuff. I did that. And, but cars are like space shuttles now, Twilight. You can't do a dang thing on them now. If you, it, you, all you need to do is, is know how to change a tire and call AAA. Okay, well, so let's but move shouldn't on. you wait? But shouldn't you know I how feel to do very like? About this. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> why don't Why don't you need to know how to like um, put in more antifreeze? And, oh well, okay. and and put in your own wiper fluid and. Okay, all right. This change. You should at least know how to change your own windshield wipers. Okay, do you know how to do it? I, I do now because I've listen. I've broken Is so it many. Hard? I've broken so many. How um, do you break a windshield wiper? Uh, it takes skill, and I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if you ice it, yeah, and you just kind of anyway. yeah, you well, should okay. know how to jump a car. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, All right. I'm, okay, I'm not saying you should know how to like change it and like fix an engine or anything like that. No, nah, mama's not getting that dirty. That's not happening. <laughs> but I mean, if you know, and I happen, we happen to live in a cold weather state. So there are certain things that occur in a cold weather state that you should, it would be easier for your life if you knew how to do it. All right. I, I will. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to move towards you a little bit okay. in your perspective, which is, I think knowing how to jump a car, how to change a tire. And yeah, change the wiper fluid, and you know, and you know what? Here's and here's the right. fun little side benefit of that. If you know those basic things, then when you open up the hood, say you take it to get fixed, and the mechanic's looking at it, when they open the hood and they start talking to you, you will not get the glaze like I've never seen the inside of my car before. So when they start saying the Liberty gibbet is broken and it's going to cost two thousand dollars, you'll know if Liberty gibbet doesn't exist. You know, like it's the, you know, like there's there's a confidence I've gained from knowing how to do a certain set of things mm-hmm. that when when somebody talks about talks to me about repairing a car, they don't they automatically know you're not be an S and me in total, yeah. you know, which is nice. That's a nice feeling because for years I'll just be like, whatever you say, how many zeros? I guess I'm paying that because I just <laughs> didn't know. Well, so. OK, I, 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 I buy a little bit. I'm I'm I'm. I'm agreeing a little bit with you on that. Okay, I'll go with that then. I'll I'll take the little okay. victory. <laughs> um, okay. Now, learning to invest, I think that's huge. That is now. I'm all over that. Yeah, we right. do, um, women and women don't talk about money enough. Women aren't taught enough about money. Women still, mm-hmm. even as we have this grand new millennium that we lived in, the millennials that are a part of it, we still struggle with how to discuss money, how to teach each other about money, how to learn about money comfortably. We still defer quite often to other people when it comes to our money. And I'm the first person to admit for, for many, 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 many years, I was terrible with money. And, um, and wasn't because I didn't have the ability to add and subtract, not because I'm not a highly intelligent person, but you, one, don't know what you don't know. You, two, can yep. be intimidated really easily about things you don't know. And to be honest, you can wind up sort of becoming paralyzed in that sort of thought process of I'm terrible with it. And yeah. um, and I think I really tr- do think um, the script that you tell yourself in your head will become reality if you don't break it. Yeah. So if you say for 20 years, I'm terrible with money, yeah. then you will be terrible with money. If you say for 20 years, I am confident with money and I will seek answers when I don't know them, yeah. then it will change how you approach it. So I, I feel like that's one of those things that it's never too late to get better at it. And it's never too late to advocate for yourself to get better at it. That's right. N- may I make a suggestion? Yes, please. So there is an organization, nonprofit in the United States called the NAIC, National Association of Investors Corporation. They help people start investment clubs. And so I don't oh. remember if you remember, I mean, this was like 15, 20 years ago. I can't remember. It was a long time ago where there was this group of older women who started this investment company uh, group. Um, and they 
they actually wrote a book about it because they were so successful. I like and, that. But it's I, you can go to this. It's any. I'm sure it's. I haven't looked it up. It'll be in the syllabus. NAIC. You can go there and get tons of information on how to join an investment club, start one, and get information on it. And it's very, very helpful information. And the other thing I think is really good um, is Money Magazine. I think Money Magazine is a superb okay. magazine for learning about investing, and um, it's kind of geared towards people that are are normal. You know, it's not geared to, you know, hedge fund managers who are making 10 million bucks a year. It's based, it's geared towards people who make regular incomes. Yeah. And are trying and, to. And, and how to build wealth. Right. Exactly. How and to build wealth. And, and I now. think that's, that's kind of the key um, sort of thing that w- gets overlooked when you get intimidated by the idea of invest, investing and in, yep. in how to invest. Yeah. Um, that if you don't learn how to do some of these things, you'll never actually develop long-term wealth. And wealth generation and wealth creation is sort of the single biggest um, barrier between, you know, some people that have a comfortable life and people that don't. I mean, I think the stats were just out recently about um, uh, generationally, you know, how different wealth creation is and or or even the the new what what in the nature of today's work um, is a huge barrier to wealth creation. Um, I'm going to find this article. It's a fantastic article that it compared what in the old days would have been um, an, a janitor that worked someplace like an IBM. Yeah, I'd end up a millionaire. After. Well, he, he went from janitor to the president of the company from in the 70s. Really? And how a janitor today at IBM would never even be able to sustain the job at IBM because they don't even make enough to live in so order right. to move themselves up a ladder. So it's And I'll find that article because it was fascinating and it was a real eye-opener to the way that work has changed yep. and the way that wealth generation has changed and why we all have to be really conscious of that now yeah god i love it twyla this is great stuff yeah thanks i know you can tell um, and you I'll can tell sure. by listening to this that twyla and i did not coordinate this before <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm like i don't like to give you things before i like to have these i know it's a spontaneous be, yeah, organic, yeah, i love so it i try really hard to do that um and i'll make sure we're we'll probably hit like the top 10 on this list and there is an extensive list here we will put the full list up at uh, matriarchdm.com on the syllabus because we want you guys to sort of one explore the list two ask questions about it we may revisit it later but i just like the idea of sort of starting the conversation because um you know it's important we should be having i have one Uh, uh uh-oh uh-oh okay (laughs) that i think everybody i'm just it's probably not on the list but it might be everybody needs to do this and i actually have to learn this myself how to tie a slip knot that will allow you to like tie a christmas tree down on top of the car i know how to do that do you will you show me how to do it Uh, okay i can tell you right now me teaching you it would probably not be the easiest way but okay i learned how to here's how i learned how to tie a slip knot you're gonna laugh my mother-in-law, God love her, I love this woman, I love her dearly, um, taught me to tie a slip knot um, at the grocery store because I used to buy, tie the bags at the grocery store, like just in an old-fashioned knot, and then I would get home with my produce and have to rip the bag open and mess it all up because I couldn't get back in it. And I tied it all tight so it wouldn't spill while I was like, driving it home. Yeah. And one day she's looking at me like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm tying a knot. And she's like, give me that. Like, as, as she has done many times over 20 years, she's like, come to me, let me teach you good things. So she showed me how to tie a slip knot on a plastic bag and then pop the slip knot. And then I was able to get into my produce and then put it back and not mess up the bag. And it blew my mind. I've been using it little everywhere place. in See, my there life. You go. We, should, we should have a little video clip of Twyla showing everybody how to do that. You know what? Even better. I'm going to see if I can get a clip of my mother-in-law even better like, doing that. it with me. Right. She's hilarious. I love her. So we'll see. Well, I'll, I'll put that in the maybe category and okay. see if we can get that done. Support for the GynoCast is provided by OBGYN West. OBGYN West provides the highest quality care from compassionate providers, including women's health issues from general sexual health to pregnancy care, childbirth, menopause, and beyond. Whether it's your teen's first annual exam, a new baby's on the way, or you're facing the special challenges of middle age, OBGYN West provides a wide array of services. Their doctors and PAs are trained in virtually every type of OBGYN service and procedure. OBGYN West provides exceptional care for women. Okay, n- next on this list of, um, it's basically a list of the 75 skills every woman should master bucket list. Uh, we just talked about uh, maintenance and investment. Uh, acquire the skill of communicating assertively. Yeah, I think this is important, mind you. I am biased. I talk for a living. It's what I do. It is my bread and butter. So I know how to talk assertively, aggressively, dismissively. 
<laughs> ridiculously. Okay, let me ask you this. I'm not sure. <laughs> under most circumstances, I like I like assertive. Yes. I'm not sure if aggressive in, under most circumstances is helpful. Um, yes, it is. And is here's it? And here's why. Okay. You don't need it every day. Now back off, Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need it Settle every down. day. You don't need it. Um, in general, I always say you should have the ability to really advocate for yourself. Um, in your back pocket and by advocating it doesn't just it's not always just oh hey fellas hey you know like hey can we calm down sometimes you find yourself in a situation where um, I like to I I liken it to the um, when the nature person like when you go to the nature center and they try to tell you about the difference between brown bears and black bears one bear you play dead with yeah if it's if it's brown lay down right and then (laughs) yeah and then if it's white good night yeah and then (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then the black bear, you're supposed to actually stand up and make yourself as yeah. big as possible to intimidate them, right? right? And back them off of you. M- women often find themselves in situations where they are intimidated by other people and they lose their ability to stand up. Yep. I think it is absolutely vital to be able, in a moment when you need it, to call your most inner angry lady voice. And it does not require yelling. But I can tell you right now that if I'm in a situation where I'm talking to you like this and things are going fine and a problem creeps up, I am going to address that problem and I can do it in a way so that you understand I'm not, you're not messing with me today. And sometimes it comes down to your safety. Sometimes it comes down to your ability to um, accomplish something you need to accomplish. I have a really good example. I was at the park with my children and uh, there was a large group of children playing and uh, you know, that like whole Frisbee golf game thing that people play sometimes for these two grown men were playing in the park and they were throwing them around or whatever. And uh, it happened that I guess they threw it in the path where the kids were and the kids went to touch the Frisbee thing. And I don't know how this game works, but you're not supposed to do that because it's like golf. It's a marker. Mm -hmm. So the kids went to touch it and these two guys got like super aggressive. We're like, well, you don't touch that. And they didn't mean to yell at the kids, but they were just a little bit much. The kids didn't tell us that it happened in the moment. They told us as we were leaving. And then my one of my kids said, yeah, that's the guy that just yelled at us. And I went, what? And she's like, yeah, that guy over there, he was yelling at us. And I was like, and she knew exactly what was about to happen. I was like, get in the car. And she's in there. She's like, you know what to say? I'm like, oh, get in the car. So I, they were coming toward me, and I and I started very, you know, you know, simply like, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I said, was there a problem with the kids earlier? And they said, and immediately, like it was, it was going to go one of two ways. It was either going to go like, yeah, and they were blah blah blah, or you know, I'm really sorry. And you could tell we were kind of doing that like 30 second dance of, is this going to be a problem or not? And I said. If there was a problem, I would just like to make sure that we're clear. And I immediately used a different tone of voice. People like to call it my mom voice or mm-hmm. my, you know, teacher voice or whatever, my authoritative voice. Yeah. And I have no problem using that. Immediately when I used my authoritative voice, because I wasn't coming apologetically, I wasn't being meek, like, oh, did, were my kids messing with you? No, you're an adult. So if you had an exchange with my child, I want clarification and I want it now. And as soon as I said that, he immediately understood I, I'm advocating for my children. So he immediately said, you know what we totally did? I'm so sorry. We went to pick the thing up and I, I just didn't want to touch it. He goes, and to be honest, we were going to go say something to the kids, but then it just seemed really weird that two grown men that don't know them are now following them. So we just didn't want to do that. And I'm like, you know what? I appreciate that. So we got it all settled really quickly, but it was very, I, I always know in those moments that I am allowed to advocate for myself and yep. the people that I love I agree. in a stronger tone than a polite tone. Women are taught to be polite all the time. Correct. You don't have to be, you don't always have to be. And it's about knowing when not to be polite and under what circumstances not to be polite to use that voice. That's right. I, I agree with you. I think you, everybody should have that in their armamentarium. Yeah. You don't use it every day. I don't walk around just yelling at everybody, yeah. but if I need it yep. and it's necessary, I use it. And when I use it, I am fully aware that I am not, this is not about me trying to intimidate you down or bully you down or get loud or yell or scream or anything. It's about asserting the fact that I am allowed, I am allowed to take up space here and you don't get to take that away. So I think it's, it's an important tool to have. Um, The next skill on this list is um, know how to use power tools. That is, I agree. I'm going to say baloney. You don't think so? Nah. Really? Yeah. Have you heard, well, why? Why is that? Because I'll tell you. Because I want to do I, I, why do I want to do that. No. Why do you want to change a tire? If you don't want to change a tire, <laughs> are you telling me? You, you, you want I'll to say ch- this is a stylistic choice <laughs> that, in my part. Yeah, that, that makes no <laughs> sense. To, but I, but you know, I will say that power. Dr- I'm learning how to l- use just basically an electric drill yeah. or screwdriver is. I, if you ever want to put something together. 
So I don't even IKEA think that's. I don't even Target. feel like that's power tools. I feel like power tools are like you Jack know, like yeah, like you have like a band saw. saw, yeah, circular saw, that kind of okay. stuff. Like the kind of stuff that lives in your in the in the garage when people take their garages and convert yeah. them into like hardware stores is that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, I I can see that. Yeah, I, I think that that is more than what most people. But I think that if we're if we're talking about like. You know, just basic electric drills. You know, yeah. That I can. Okay, I can. Uh, okay, I can. Are you moving points. my direction a little bit? Oh well, yeah, just okay. like yeah. Okay. And I mean, I like before I left my house. My fa- when I moved away many many years ago, yeah. my father made sure I had a certain set of things. He gave me a certain set of tools, and he made sure I knew how to do certain maintenance in my first apartment. He came and helped move me into my first apartment. <laughs> Numb <Gnome> chucks, <laughs> flying stars, <laughs> rocket that's, launcher. That's my mom. That was my mom. <laughs> No, my dad. Where did you get these rocket launchers? My dad, my dad was always like, "You need a hammer, and this is, you know, you're gonna use to hang things up." And my mom was like, "And if you spin it around like this, you can get them in the head." You know, that's that was always my mom. <laughs> so, like, he taught me how to fix a toilet. Taught me how to fix a simple link. You know, in the sink, yeah. ever sink things. You know, things that we normally would panic is fix something. A toilet, toilet. Yeah, is I know that how to fix. It, I know how to fix a toilet. It's not on the list, but it should be because that's should actually something be. that every person should know how to do. Yeah, it's not smart. that hard, and it's smart to and know how unplug to do. a toilet. Is that in there? Yeah, you should know how to do that too. Yeah, yeah there's, well, that's gonna be a whole other bucket list. For us. <laughs> that's a nasty bucket. Uh, now, this <laughs> next one, I'm a little divided on this. Take a self defense class. Yeah. Now, I, it's not that I don't advocate for being able to know how to defend yourself. Everybody knows me. I carry a bat. It's a real thing. Um, you carry a bat? Yeah, everywhere. It's in the trunk of my car. Right. Listen, I don't start things, but I finish them. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that about right. me. I could just see you getting out of the car, <laughs> slapping that thing. Again. I'm just, I don't start things, but I finish them. And I have one in my bedroom, too. I have one next to my bed. That's and a good idea. In my, in my, my kid came in once and said, Mom, why do you have a bat next to your bed? You guys, it makes can no I t- sense. I'm going to intervene here. Okay. Do not listen to my toilet. Get some pepper spray. No. Why not? Pe- you, you're telling me that a bat... Okay, here's what I'm telling you. You're gonna. I'm not saying that pepper spray. Grab the oh, wait, bat. I'm not saying that pepper spray is bad. It is a great thing. But here's the two things that go wrong with pepper spray all the time. One, when you're spraying it, you and you're panicking spraying it. You're you not. Spray your own face. You wind up spraying a large amount, so it winds up. It winds up hurting you too. Um, and sometimes, if you're not careful with pepper spray, it's you know it's. Like you're panicking and it's in the little case and it's got the protective thing and in the in the heat of like trying to protect yourself you're scrambling to open the stupid thing and then you wind up getting taken down with the bat. Listen, <laughs> the bat. listen with the bat. I'm telling you right now, don't well just don't swing at the traditional target. People get a bat and they swing for the head. Yeah, you got don't for the do knees. that. You gotta yeah, go, go for, for the, the knees and the ankles. Bony prominence. Listen. <laughs> knees and ankles take them out knock them down and then hit them over the yeah, back with the yeah. thing like then like my mom always says the fight that you win is the one you walk away from so you guys this is not this is a what twilight is advocating is not is does not in any way reflect matriarch <laughs> digital, <laughs> digital media this is her own opinion even though it's her yeah, company these, yeah these are these are my opinions Somebody's, I was I was taught how to survive in the world by a woman who was a self-professed school bully so she she taught me to she taught me basically to either to do one of two things to get my to be clever enough to get myself out of a situation but if I was stuck in a situation yeah. she always taught me to look for the angles to get out and her thing was always the same survive is the key to the game here. She de- she wasn't like, I want you to beat somebody to death. I want you to, like, she was just like, <laughs> can you use an object to your advantage so that it gives you r- time to run? Do that. Can you use an object to get somebody away from you so that you have the time to put yourself in another location? Do that. Like, I to this day, if I'm in a restaurant or I'm in a public place, I know where the exits are. I always look for them first. Do you, do you sit in the corner? I so usually, <laughs> actually, I don't like the corner because the corner doesn't give you access to get out of a yeah, building in a hurry. you see anybody coming in, so if there's... No, but I just always make sure I never sit with my back to the door. Right. And that's actually true. I don't sit, my, my girlfriends will tell you, they laugh at me all the time. I never sit with my back to the door. Are you a member of this? Are you part of the CA? Just I should it. be. I should just be. I'm pretty crafty. So if anybody but out yeah, there has nothing else to do, there's a, a, a very sick but sort of funny video with Will Ferrell called Bat Fight. Yeah, if, I think I've seen, seen that. Have you seen that? I think I've seen it, that. He, we'll he, find he's it. singing a song. It's called it's called bat fight. It's just so yeah. yeah I I'm thinking about you, Twyla, wielding that bat. Yeah. So bat so I'm sorry because I'm derailing it now talking oh about my, my bat. God. But the idea of taking a self defense class <laughs> for a woman, I get it and I get the idea of it. But I I and I wish we didn't need it. I wish we were able to address more thoroughly the idea that women should just be safe in the world because we're teaching people, you know, men and women, how to be more respectful of women in the world so that they're not 
so easily victimized. It's the idea of um, it's, a, it's the idea of instead of teaching men not to rape women, we teach women how to defend themselves against rape. We shouldn't. Yeah. We shouldn't have to. But it's kind of the world we live in. So I get wanting to have a certain amount of um, physical confidence that you can take care of yourself. But it, like right now, that's the world we live in. So that's how it'll be. Um, so yeah, bat fight by Will Ferrell. Yeah. Okay. Don't no. Hot don't summer, don't do that now. Day. Nothing going down. Okay, what are you doing? Wanna get out of this sleepy what? old town. What are you doing? Something's at the air. I'm doing bat fight. Okay, you're not doing bat fight for Listen, me now. I will put you, it on the website. You, you cannot you cannot take ten minutes out and talk about your bat. The bat Without was germane saying, okay, to the th- thing. Listen to this, though. It'll take me a second. No, Something you're not. In the air, oh you're feeling uptight. You know I'm editing this out, right? <laughs> it's the right mood for a bat fight. I'm totally, there it is. I'm totally editing that out. You can't. You, you told me yourself you can't edit anything out. Yes, I can. This is live. I mean, it sort is. Of. We, we live to tape, but I can edit anything out that I need to edit out. <laughs> Dang we'll it. Put it up on the, we'll, Dang put, it. we'll put it up on the no, syllabus. No, you can't put it in the syllabus because it's a terrible song. Well, so... It's just it's it, it's just you'll watch it and you'll just think I can't believe. Well, better it. but better for them to like look at it on our website than to like go find it someplace else and to be annoyed that they had to go someplace else to find it. That's Which right. It's like it. talking about sex with your adolescent, right? You want to talk about it at home, not have them going out somewhere. And right, find it out. It yeah, out learn it there. from their dumb friends. Exactly. Yeah. So. All right. So, public service announcement: Do not get a bat. No, get not. get a bat. Just be smart with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Hey, listen. Sometimes just take, sometimes just holding the bat is enough to make people go, "Oh, she's crazy," and then they go. Enough for me. I, I'm I'm doing an intervention. Here. Do not get a bat. <laughs> you know, it's like having a gun. You know, you better. You know, I I would actually think a gun is better than a bat because well, what's going to happen is somebody's going to grab that bat no, and beat not. you. They're not. Not if you know what you're doing. All right. I I, I want somebody. I want people to to okay. To we're write not, okay. into the gyno <laughs> cast <laughs> Facebook group. So that's we're a not good keep talking segue. About it, I promise. So segue. You know, if you're not a member of the gyno yeah, cast, you should like, be join because then you can write in and say. Either that you you agree with Twyla's idea of carrying a bat at all times, I do, or whether it, maybe some other weapon, or whether you think it's I not mean, a good idea. Okay, fine, we'll have this debate. I mean, I'm, right, I'm we're resolute. Now, we're now we're on like number five out of seventy five. No, um, we're actually um, we're actually on number eight, uh, seven out of seventy five. But we're only going to hit the top ten. So stop that! I told God. you. I told you we're only going to do the top ten, and we're going to put the whole list up on the website. So number seven in this is uh, practice your poker face. I think that's bunk. Oh, that's good. No, well, no, no. Nope. Why not? Because if you don't have one, you don't have one. Why should you? Tr- why should you try to pretend? Sometimes it's very helpful for people to see your face and know that they're full of crap, and they'll stop. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you can't disagree with everything on the on the. I don't the disagree list. with it. I just uh, I told Rachel you. I, bucket list. But I told you I enjoy taking these things apart and uh, for very specific reasons. If they're if they're I don't mm-hmm. like. I don't like advocating for women to be less of themselves for the purpose of everybody else's comfort. A I poker face I'm is for you. somebody else's comfort. No, it's not. A poker face is for them not to be able to read what you're thinking. Yeah, when I'm playing poker, that's fine. But if I'm, but if you just ask me, you know, something stupid, you should know you ask me something stupid. <laughs> Something's in the air. No, don't start singing them that. Like, yeah, we're not it's doing It's the right that. mood for a okay, so Twilight <laughs> Bat Fight. <laughs> <Don't do this. laughs> okay, uh, number nine on this list. Actually, is a very important one, and I'm sure you will be an advocate for and it. And I'm sure you are going to disagree with it. No, I'm going to agree right. 100%. Yeah. Every, woman sh- every woman should know how to do a breast self-exam. Oh, now you're going to disagree. Now you're going to disagree. Yeah, I, I think, okay, so. Well, not a self-exam. Let's, let's be more specific because we have talked about that. Before. Self-awareness. Right. How do you like that? Oh, yeah, I like that. Now, let, now, ex- now expand. Well, it's just that there's not a whole lot of evidence that self-breast exams prolong survival. Okay. So, that, so this, is, uh, this is actually interesting because uh, we don't really advocate so much that women do self-breast exams anymore. And I, I think that that's a little bit of a shame um, because I think it's important to, you know, use maybe use the the, the better term is self awareness. I know if you check your breasts every month at the same time, um, you will get to know what's normal for you. Right. And I think that's important. Right. And that's self awareness is a very good way of putting yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a fine line between awareness. Well, and, and you've exam. talked about that um, all the way around. That not just with you know like breast examination, but your body in general. So if you understand 
what is normal for you in terms of, say, with your vagina, your discharge. Then you will yeah, know when exactly. something is off. You right. know, if you know what's normal for you in terms of what your skin looks like, right. then you will know when something is off. So understanding, exactly. a b- having a real awareness of your body is important. I like that. See, see, look, we wound up on the same we, page we on do. that. Yeah. Look, I like when we agree. Okay, um, number <laughs> 10. <laughs> Don't start with the bad <laughs> fight again. Okay, number 10 on this list, and this is the last one we'll go over today, um, is learn to delegate. Yeah, that's good. I should probably learn that skill. I haven't learned it yet. That's important. Um, and you know, I think you that's can't imp- do everything. Yeah, I think that's important because I think women fancy themselves as having it be a badge of honor that they can multitask. And I think we even take it as a strange badge of honor that we multitask ourselves into like exhaustion or unhappiness or extreme measures. You know, like I think we we take a little bit of sick pride in saying, oh, your day was hard. I had to take these kids to school and then I had to do this. And then the four o'clock came and my husband did do this thing. And then all of a sudden dinner was never ready. And, blah, and, I, and I barely slept three hours last night, exactly. but I'm here. Well, that's a weird kind of Amer- I, I, I think United States culture thing, which is the harder you work, the greater, you know, it's like everyone's a badge of honor that you're yeah, the, the, yeah, it's the Yeah, it's the badge of honor. You've worn yourself out, you know, right. out or, you know, driven yourself into the ground. And I don't think that's actually helpful. And I, I think it's hard to learn how to delegate if you're not willing to um, give up control of things. That's right. So I, I, the, the mantra in our house is, do you want to be right or do you want help? And Ooh, sometimes that means that the laundry got washed today and it got folded super jank. So everybody's stuff is kind of weird because all their whites are red. Yeah. We're, well, no, I don't like that. That's a bit much. <laughs> but like my like if my nine year old's helping to fold, you know, washcloths and towels, it is not the time for me to go back and be like, no, we do these in thirds like this. And then they make a nice stack for the. No, yeah. you just take the help and go. Thank you, baby girl. And yeah, it's going to look a little funky in there, but they're clean. The laundry got done, and now you guys can spend some time together. That's yep. what's important, right? I like that. So I like that. Now, uh, this list is just sort of the tip of the iceberg, and I'm sure we'll be revisiting it in some degree uh, in the future. But we're going to post the full list and the website that it came from in the syllabus that you can find at matriarchdm.com. I'm sure we'll continue to debate. You're not going to keep dragging my bat. My bat is effective. And we're going to sing our way out. No, Thanks we're for not. Listening. Something's Make sure, in no, the air. You're feeling doing that. tight. Okay, stop singing Twilight bat fight. in the <laughs> I'm gonna, fight. You forget I'm, if we're in my house. I know where my bat is. Uh, well, if you, but we have to make sure we tell everybody, if you haven't been to the Facebook page, oh, you gotta go. please go to the you Facebook page. Join. You have to join the Facebook page. It's super it's easy. There's 2,000 people there of people that, with varying opinions, all sharing their opinions respectfully. Absolutely. It's, uh, listen, I can say this um, wholeheartedly. That's the thing. One of the things I'm most proud of of having done this work with you yep. is that you maintain a Facebook page and a Facebook group um, that is highly respectful, uh, very supportive. Yep. Um with a wide variety of opinions and people from all different walks of life um, interacting and participating. And it is a space where you really genuinely can learn. I, at least once a week I am on that page and someone has shared something that I'm like, oh, that's fascinating. I'm going to yep. link to that article and read it later. Or that is really cool. Thank you for sharing that. Yep. And it happens continuously. And it's super easy to be a part of. Go to Facebook, type in The Gynocast. The Gynocast. Um, request to be a part of the page. It is a closed group, so you have to request to join it. And I will, I will vet it. I yes, you do. You really do. You vet them occasionally. I, I occasionally I vet them, especially. I got to tell you, and this is. I know I'm profiling, but if you are a forty-year-old guy from rural Eastern Europe, listen, I got. I'm looking at your. I'm looking through your pictures. Yeah, if you're a rural Eastern guy from, if you're a rural guy, middle aged from Eastern Europe, and your actual Facebook page contains nothing but like butt shots of women in bikinis. Exactly. Not letting you in the That group. happens like every other day. Yeah, we, we get a we get a good share of those people that are like, hey, hey now. No, you just turn the exit is that way, sir. The exit is every, that way. Every virtually every I, I will admit gender bias. If you're a woman, I usually just I just approve. I don't. Uh, I look at everything. So maybe I should be vetting these maybe more. Maybe you should. <laughs> exactly. But if you're a guy, I'm looking at you. Yeah, I we got my eyes. Uh, yeah, a little side eye. And there's nothing wrong with that. So, as always, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Twyla. Thanks for listening. See you soon.